Do you ever feel like your brain falls out when you're emotional? Do you act stupid when you're infatuated or you make bad decisions when you're scared or angry? Well, most people do, and there's a good reason for that. The rational part of your brain shuts down when it perceives a threat. It doesn't want complex thinking to get in the way of survival. So examples of this for our ancestor could have been needing to run away from a tiger, or needing to eat something high in calories so they didn't starve to death, or falling in love so that they could reproduce. Today, we experience all these same emotions when things get intense, but the circumstances are quite different. Our brain may enter survival mode when getting feedback from our boss at work, or when we have to talk to a big group of people. We may shut down when getting a bad grade on a school assignment, or when we get rejected by a crush. In these circumstances, allowing the brain to regress into survival mode into our emotionally reactive limbic system is not the best strategy. We all need a way to slow things down and think clearly so that we can make better choices that help us move through these uncomfortable situations instead of just reacting to them. Our brain and our emotions are incredible, powerful, wonderful things, but sometimes emotions make us act kind of stupid. In this video, you're gonna learn 25 coping skills to help with anxiety, depression, and intense emotions. Coping skills are techniques you can use to get out of your emotional brain, back into your rational brain, so that you can think clearly again. The other day, I had a client who was 20 minutes late, and do you know what I did? I read key insights from Extreme Productivity and half of the Worry-Free Mind on the Blinkist app. I seriously love Blinkist because I seriously love reading, but I also don't have time to read all the books I want to. Now, today's video is sponsored by Blinkist. With Blinkist, you can read or listen to really clear, crisp summaries of the most important points of books. And you can do it in about 15 minutes. You can get the best insights from over 3,000 nonfiction books. With this app, you could read a book a day for a year, but in just 15 minutes. Now, I've already learned a bunch from the books that I've read, so here's some books I would recommend. Anything by Brene Brown, like her books The Gift of Imperfection, Daring Greatly, and Dare to Lead, Atomic Habits by James Clear, 13 Things Mentally Strong People Don't Do by Amy Marin. So check it out. The first 100 people to click the link in the description will get seven days of unlimited access to Blinkist completely free. So you could read a blink a day or more, and you could cancel anytime you want, or you can get the full membership for 25% off. So seriously, check it out. You're gonna love it. When I was volunteering in Argentina for a year and a half, we had a situation where we had been working really hard to help people, really pouring our souls out to try to help people improve their lives. And we were like physically, emotionally, spiritually giving everything we had. One day during a meeting, one of our local leaders, uh, the man who was supposed to be supporting the work we were doing, he basically told us that all the people we were working with were losers and that there was no hope and that we were doing a terrible job. We finished that meeting late at night, we were exhausted, we were angry, we were discouraged, and my coworker called the president in tears. Uh, we were ready to just quit in that area. And our leader listened carefully and he said, hermanas, go to bed. Things will look better in the morning. And, and he was right. After we took a break, we came back to the problem refreshed after a night's sleep. We were able to go back to that leader with clarity to, you know, confront the issue. And we were able to do a lot of good in that town. So in this video, you're going to learn all about coping skills. If you're feeling like you're in crisis, if you feel like you're gonna make bad choices, if you're afraid you might self-harm, or if you're just so emotional that you can't think clearly, HALT. Okay, this is an acronym to help you remember that if you're hungry, angry, lonely, tired, or if you're on substances, or if you're severely depressed or severely anxious or whatever, pause, slow yourself down, and reach out to the resources. So in the rest of this video, we're gonna talk about some of the coping skills you can use, and we're gonna develop um, a little bit of a crisis plan for the people you can connect with in case, you know, something comes up that feels a little too big for you to handle in the moment. Coping skills are activities that we can do that help us calm down. Many of the best ones incorporate brain and body and don't have negative side effects like emotional eating or, or drugs do, right? Now, this is just a short list. There are hundreds of things that people can do to calm themselves down. And as you may know from my previous video, 
um, why I hate coping skills. I'm obviously not a huge fan of relying only on coping skills, but coping skills really do serve an important function in the short term. They often soothe or comfort us and help us calm down and make better choices. But coping skills do nothing to solve our problems in the long term, and some of them, if used exclusively, can be harmful. Coping skills help us take a break from our discomfort, but also from our life purpose. So that's why I get a little bugged when I hear that the only skill someone is learning in therapy is how to cope. Use coping skills to get through a crisis, to get calm, and then come back and resolve the problem. This ability to pause before choosing an action is an essential skill of emotionally resilient people. As we develop emotional muscles, we develop greater capacity to accept and resolve issues that come up for us. However, there will be times when we can't process the whole issue all at once. One definition of trauma is something that happens to us faster than we can process it. If we react immediately when we haven't had a chance to work through our thoughts, feelings, and physical reactions, then our actions often make things worse. On the other hand, if we just avoid the problem, we also suffer. So when an issue is just really big, or perhaps the time or place isn't right or safe for processing, we can use coping skills to keep ourselves calm or safe until we can go back to the problem and resolve it. As you go through this list, it's important to find a few coping skills that work for you in various settings. So find some that you can use at home, some for work, and others for when you're in a group of people. So let's jump in. First, there's sensory coping skills. These are helpful because they incorporate various parts of the brain and body, and they can soothe the core brain, that limbic brain where the fight, flight, freeze response stems from. These include stepping outside for a breath of fresh air, taking a walk, listening to music, feeling a comfortable texture, like a child holding a blanket or an adult holding a rosary, smelling an enjoyable smell, getting a massage, exercise, taking a hot shower or a cold face wash, knitting or sewing or building something. Now, let's talk about cognitive coping skills. These can help us process through the thoughts related to the emotion. So these can include writing everything down, like with a brain dump, um, journaling, meditation, mindfulness, prayer, coloring, guided imagery, and progressive muscle relaxation. Let's talk about active coping skills. These can help us feel safe and supported while facing challenges, right? So there's playing an instrument, making some music, humor, watching a funny clip on YouTube, watching TV. So be really careful. TV and most things with screens are powerful distractions that take up and turn off much of the brain and essentially prevent the brain from resolving issues. So if you find yourself getting trapped watching too much TV, then I would say don't use this one as a coping skill. It's fine in the short term or even in a crisis, but in the long run, it's not gonna help you out. Um, some other coping skills include reading a book, doing a crossword, getting out in nature, planting some seeds, give yourself a facial, or expressing your emotions through art or music. Okay, let's talk about some connection coping skills. Um, hug someone, pet an animal, talk it out with a friend, write a letter to someone, or write out your difficulty in an email before talking with them. Now, using coping skills to avoid our problems can create a dependency on that activity. I've actually worked with people who have addictions to many of these coping skills. So I've seen addictions to TV, to shopping, to food, drugs, alcohol. Um, I've seen addictions to Scrabble, uh, video games, social media, eating, exercise, and other coping skills. So again, the way to tell if a coping skill is helpful is not only if it makes you feel good, but if it helps you return to resolve the problem. Healthy coping skills leave you feeling better the more you do it, but I mean better in the long run. So write down three activities that you can use to calm down when you're feeling overwhelmed with emotions, and try to think of at least one that will work in a different environment. So work, home, or school, etc. And then write down three people who you could contact in case of a mental health crisis. Who are your three go-to people that you could call if you're in crisis? Now, if you're experiencing a severe mental health crisis right now, please go to your local hospital or call 911. And I'd like you to research for your crisis plan, you know, what are some of the mental health resources in your area? So what hotlines could you use? Now, for example, in my country and state, there are a few resources. There's the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, um, and there's Safe Utah. Both of these allow you to chat with a crisis counselor um, live, either on the phone or through text messaging. 
And if you'd like to learn more about coping skills and self-care, you can check out my course on, on that topic. Um, the link is in the description. As you work to develop your coping skills, you'll develop a greater ability to slow yourself down, make better choices, and get through those crises that do come up. Thank you for watching and please take care. This video is one skill from my 30 skill course, How to Process Your Emotions, where I teach 30 of the most essential skills for resolving depression, anxiety, and improving mental health. Emotion processing is an essential skill for working through intense emotions, but most people have never been taught how to do it. I'm putting every single main video lesson on YouTube for the world to access for free. You watching these videos, sharing them, contributing to my Patreon, and my sponsors make this possible. If you would like to access the entire course in one place, ad-free, with its workbook, exercises, downloads, extra videos, live Q&As, additional short readings, and links to extended resources, the link to buy the course is in the description below.